Welcome to episode 21 of Virtualized Geeks Tech Talks, the demise of the system administrator and the rise of the enterprise architect. So what's the difference between the enterprise ar architect and the system administrator? I was at a pretty interesting CIO roundtable today where I was discussing this with a couple of CIOs and uh, IT directors, and we were talking about the needs of the enterprise uh, when it comes to technical resources in a cloud environment. So organizations are obviously taking a step away from running their uh, own infrastructure as they look at deploying new applications, new services, to looking to outsource that stuff to uh, service providers and cloud providers. And how does this affect the, the skill and the resume of today's system administrator? So the gist of the conversation was that there's no longer as deep of a need to have experts in SAN, WAN, uh, server technologies, and it's much more desirable to have individuals that are well-rounded around with both business skill, project management skill, and, uh, and technical skill. So when they're interviewing individuals for roles, uh, of individual contributor, whether it be an individual contributor role or a management role, they're looking for individuals that can manage projects, so they can have a PMP certification, for example, or PMI, in addition to a VMware uh, VCP5 for, uh, on the virtualization side or the tech side. They're looking for individuals to no longer answer questions on uh, what's the set of layers of the OSI model. That's not as important. They need uh, engineers or technical resources that can take a project from inception all the way to implementation and, and then into operations. So practically, what does this look like? Uh, there, there, there would be the need for a enterprise architect, we'll, we'll leave this person an enterprise architect, to collect, uh, so perform the role of an analyst today. So it's collect requirements from the IT consumer, uh, go out, do a vendor selection, negotiate the, potentially negotiate the contract for providing the services, uh, create an implementation schedule or plan, manage that implementation, and then manage the vendor relationship after the implementation has been completed and now we're in operations mode. That is a big change from what we do today as SAs and uh, systems engineers, it requires a completely different skill set. The exciting part is that those skills or those positions are usually higher end positions, but they leave less room for system administrators within the enterprise. So I see the market going to two ways. Either you're a SA uh, and a cloud provider or a system uh, integrator or uh, uh, some type of managed service provider, or you're at some point, you're somewhere in that life cycle managing those individuals and understanding how the relationship between the two continue to uh, exist. That's it for this version of Virtualized Geeks Tech Talk. I encourage you to subscribe to our videos and on YouTube by clicking the little subscribe button down there and visiting us on virtualizedgeek.com.